Thanks, guys. It's really great to sit here with Stodelat. I have three members here, Nikolai. These are three members. There are others, of course, but this is Nikolai, Dmitri, and Olga. Thanks for sitting with us today, me. Um, we are in conversation. It's, this is not your first experience with the summit, but certainly um, this is unique in so much as, for those of you who did not know, there is a festival that's happening this weekend called Nuit Blanche. And one of them, one, as a part of that, we will be um, doing a project with Stodelat that's happening in front of City Hall called A Monument to a Century of Revolutions. It is something that we will discuss here, um, what it is, how it came to be, the trials and tribulations therein. But um, it's also wonderful to have a monument to the Bolshevik Revolution situated in front of City Hall. You don't always get that honor. Long live public art. Um, just to say, initially we talked about restaging, Eisenstein's restaging of the storming of the Winter Palace, so that did not get accepted. Um, <laughs> but first let's talk about, let's talk about you. So you guys were founded in 2003? Maybe you can just talk about what brought Stodelat together. Oh. To be honest, it's uh, very difficult to start. Usually I try to hide myself, but this time I am the first. And <laughs> so about, about our group, uh, first of all, I would like to, to, say, to tell you that we have nine members. We are the big group. And now we, you, you, you see only three of us. We are artists, but we have one more artist, Natalia Pershnikimanska Glukle. She was a participant. Last previous, previous year, and um, she is working a lot herself. And we have philosophers in our group: Alexey Penzin, Oksana Timofeeva, uh, Artemy Magun, one very famous poet, Russian poet Alexander Skidan, Skidan and uh, brilliant choreographer Nina Gastiva. So we're uh, the big group, and we are together already. 14 years, and that's extremely long time. For the group, it's, uh, it's impossible <laughs> to survive, you know? And uh, sometimes people ask me why you are together, how you, you, you can keep this communication. And I think because we are the family. And I, I should say that it's pretty unusual because I know a lot of groups when people are just professionals and they are doing something together and that's all. But we are the family. And this is why we are fighting, usually fighting. And uh, uh, sometimes we do it publicly and sometimes people think that, oh, that's what they do. Uh, one day they kill each other. But usually it is just, just a discussion, you know. We are discussing art and that's... <laughs> But, you know, we are Russians. I think I've fallen prey to that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we are Russians, and that's our temperature, maybe. And that's, that's our, you know, communication. And, of course, it, it means that we love each other because usually people fight like we usually do just one time, and that's enough, you know. Yeah, that's our family. And uh, what should I say? Uh, that... Um, uh, we are doing a lot of things because we have nine numbers, and we are, practically we are doing videos, films, video installations, performances, murals, Nikolai is a big artist of murals. We are doing learning plays on the stage, we are doing conferences, and of course we are doing our newspaper. So a lot of things, but uh, recently I realized that in general we are doing contemporary art. <laughs> you know, I, I know that it sounds funny, of course, what's that, what, what, what that, yeah, contemporary art, but you know, I understood for myself that contemporary art means art about contemporary, art about this day, you know, this point of history, this point of time, you know. And if you are doing contemporary art, it means that you have to feel this, this point, you know, try to analyze it and um, try to make it visible, visible for everybody. And of course, it's always a combination of immortal things, love, 
and death, they're always with us, but of course it includes a lot of uh, temporary things. For example, new American president is temporary, but it is changing our life, you know, and we have to include it in our art somehow. And this is why I think that that project which we made on the square near City Hall is pretty contemporary. It is not because uh, this year we celebrate 100 years of great October social revolution. Not only, unfortunately, because the world is changing. And maybe this time we need to refresh a little bit our knowledge about revolutions. So that's what I wanted to tell. And uh, 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 this project was realized uh, mostly by my friends. I'm just, I'm here just for the person for, for discussion, you know, for beating, but, and uh, um, Bite. for biting, sorry, for biting. And of course, you know, I, I, I would like to tell you something very important, but because uh, when you are working in a group, you always have one very important privilege. You always have some, somebody who is observing you, you know. We always, in our group, has this uh, view from... Uh, no, um, distance. We always from distance, view from distance. Of course, the distance is not very long because we are very close to each other. But when we are doing contemporary art, it's very important to 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 be in collective. So. Well, certainly there is a history of collectives not lasting that long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and probably for those reasons. And I'm very impressed that you have managed to do that. Maybe it's because you fought from the beginning. Um, so you, so here's the, the ad for the project, you might say. Um, initially, this is the image that was sent to me as the idea. This is, we wanted a, a revolutionary circus, was what the pro proposition was, correct? But with, but with clowns and everything. First proposition was by Naita Thompson to basically, um, revise the revolutionary uh, uh, moment and to actually storm not the Winter Palace but the City Hall of Toronto. It was him who invited us with this crazy idea and we said yes, yeah, sure. And then the circus came up. That's true. And we're going to do the circus. But I wanted to just indicate some, I have some images of some previous work so the audience gets a sense of the other kind of aesthetic installations you've done. But certainly, like Olga mentions, you guys do a variety of things from theater to poetry to newspapers to dance. So it's hard to represent all that in such a short amount of time. Um, just to kind of move forward a bit to the project we're taking on. And I also, just to give you a heads up, I also want us to somewhat grapple with what it means to look back at 100 years of revolutions, rather than just leave it open-ended. We'll, we should push to at least give, put some of ourselves on the table with that. So this is the inspiration for the design of the project. This is um, El Lizitsky's Beat the Whites with the Red Wedge. Can you guys talk about this inspiration? <clears throat> Actually, we collaborate with Yuri Avakumov, and with whom we met here one year ago. And actually, when we unfortunately a little bit get rid of idea of direct circus, we thought about indirect. <laughs> and uh, Yuri came up with this proposition because architecturally the square very much provokes that kind of resemblance. And then that container, because it's also a very special medium, because in public art project it's a very long topic, I know. <laughs> and in this case it was really very hard to find the balance. On one hand it should be super impressive and spectacular because on this square people cannot see anything which less than, I don't know, 20 meters big. It should be actually 200 meters big, otherwise no one will see it. And then came that idea that container, and actually those who remember how the histories of 20th century revolution started, remember that Vladimir Lenin arrived to Russia, was delivered in a kind of container. It was a wagon, a car, he arrived from Finland, and actually it started to provoke us because that the medium of container is very kind of problematic and ambivalent. And then, yeah, so it really, the construction of the whole space, it's a number of containers, maybe we'll show it later, who are moving 
into the direction of the city hall, and it fills with different. I'm just going to kind of give them a sense of it here, yeah, yeah, just yeah. so they get a feel. Mm. And it's just just to say, maybe just as a note, what the project consists of is a series of containers, half of which each container takes on a historical revolution from Russia to Germany to China to Cuba to the colors revolutions. And, and those are inspired by the aesthetic sensibilities of that particular revolutionary moment. And those are installed by Stowe de Lot. And then the other half, each container is given over to an artist who invited an activist group. And they installed projects in each of those containers, thus being a living, breathing monument situated in front of City Hall. Sorry. Yeah. No, 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 <clears throat> no, but I mean, also for us, yeah, it makes sense because for us that the idea of rethinking the concept of monumentality, what is monumental today, what kind of form of commemoration and rituals can artists today create, because it's very part of our general kind of artistic history that our permanent insistence that without kind of creating counter narratives, counter historical possibilities to remember something, we will be definitely lost on all levels, politically and aesthetically too. So this is really something which is stake at our work. And here I think we made kind of humble proposal. It was kind of accepted and we realize it. We uh, <laughs> kind of realize it. And this was really a very simple idea, kind of, it's simple, it's kind of Wikipedia because the problem of our contemporary situations and people don't remember anything. So we live in a shortened and shortened kind of historical memory. And sometimes it really makes sense like at the level of, again, Wikipedia to remember there was German revolution. It was Rosa Luxemburg, who, Karl Liebknecht, who were murdered by Nazi in 1918. Remember this. Don't forgive, don't forget. That's very simple, but sometimes you need to say very simple things. And the square is not a place for super sophisticated, you know, speculation about, no, no one get it. You should be really as simple as possible to get that at least with a little, little hope of getting accessibility to that large number of public who doesn't care, who has long standing memory, but curious. So they're really curious and we presume maybe they're hungry for something new, for something kind of experience that might city not provide to them. And this is kind of very humble task, that's it. Well, I would also say, I mean, in, in, first of all, a great nod to Nui Blanche for taking this on. And we know that, you know, we've seen the, some press come out about how it's, Nui Blanche is becoming political or it's a political exhibition, but it isn't without its own risks and I think of it as aesthetic calisthenics because um, certainly there's a lot of content in here. And also we learned, I've learned with this project, but I've always known it, which is no one minds if you're abstractly, um, if you're abstractly saying, hey, let's, you know, down with capitalism, anybody will say it. I'm sure Coca-Cola will say it. <laughs> but if you say down with a CEO and name the CEO of Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola will not support that. <laughs> And it's the same goes for local politics, which is it's um, and we, you know, I think in many ways, some of the difficult conversations we've had with this project and I'm sympathetic as an administrator, you know, I know our people get down on administrators, but they suffer. They do. They suffer. They don't even get to go up on stage. They just they suffer the wrath of artists and reality. <laughs> So God bless you administrators. But you know, I do think that it is a tricky thing because of the, you know, the, the, where the real rubber hit the road is with the local activist groups in this project who start naming names and do have some, and it's not all sweet in Toronto, despite what you hear. <laughs> yeah, this, despite all the syrup that Canada produce, uh, it's not as sweet. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was an important moment for us to understand once we arrived here a year ago uh, that you cannot speak about the history of revolution and revolutions of 100 years without speaking about local 
struggles without speaking not for local people, but taking them in and listening what they want to, uh, to tell you. And that was quite a crucial moment for us to invite those entities, to invite those people who really are seriously in politics and seriously in art. And uh, this combination made for us a lot of sense, much more if we were just being parachuted from Russia with our revolution of 1917, which is no longer relevant as such. As a memory, yes, but what is at stake here in Toronto, we found out a lot. And uh, we're very, very proud to work um, elbow to elbow, as we say. Do you have this expression in English? Yeah. Yeah, do. so elbow to elbow with uh, Carl, Carol, things, Chuck, and uh, other artists, Red LAL. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, we're proud to be on the same square, on the same spot, in the same historical moment, together in Toronto. Can you, um, there's, uh, uh, there's a big tower in the center of the project, and you made a banner that reads, revolution is not a safe space, and, um, which is interesting. And there's also quoted this Mao line that I'm hoping you remember, um, that you could say, because I thought that was interesting, because I also think it's a reflection on the process as well. Uh, I don't remember correctly the whole phrase, because the phrase is very long, but it says uh, approximately that revolution is not a dinner party, not making an embroidery, not writing a poem or an essay. It's not that refined and beautiful and calm. It is a, an act of violence when one class overthrow the other one. And it's true. And probably some of our uh, allies or people who invited us here started to understand that revolution is not about a nice change that comes itself, not at all. But yes, but it is an act of violence and it is a historical act. Um, I know that our time is running short and certainly there's something I want to get to which is we live in a very um, interesting, and it's funny because we've done 10 of these summits and I always can kind of get a, it's, it's sometimes a finger in the water where the mood's at. It's, it's dark right now, you know, for social movements. And we were talking about even in the process, which is solidarity is an elusive thing. And in reflecting back on the lessons learned, can you guys just kind of maybe throw in some things of what have, what have you learned through this process and also what does solidarity mean in terms of working with local activist groups, but in terms of you work across the world, like where are social movements at? What, are your, what is your own feeling about the 21st century? You know, we absolutely agree. It's times really dark. That's why sometimes my sarcastical comments about the circus and about the celebration, you can hardly find most worse moment to talk about revolution. Revolution, not an agenda at all. But at the same time, we also, like today, what Ari was speaking about, that kind of, oh, hey guys, how politics become incredibly culturalized, also transform into something else. And I think today also we should a little bit break that kind of easy, nice talking about heavy things. So I'm always <laughs> made kind of a joke that revolution also is not about how we dance and if we dance or not. It's about violent act. And I'm Things that symptomatically when people more and more quoting Emma Goldman, who actually from the city, and we consciously escape this quote because we think it's overplay. It's not time to dance. It's time to do something kind of much more serious things. And also, I remember it was on the stage that talks about that aesthetics. So we also think, and for us it was very important point that revolution, if we jump and translate into realm of aesthetics, it's not about beauty. It's not about nice. It's about sublime. And sublime is dangerous thing. And actually, in this case, we wanted to remind that actually with our film program <laughs> very much contested how this particular hot 
live images for previous epoch were not allowed to be screened on the square. And this is very symptomatic, because even in these images, people feel danger. Those who are in power. You can do very hardcore political movie, but remember, they will be shown in marginal cinema outside of the city center. No one allowed to screen anything which really bring you in completely another state of mind in front of million people on the stage or on TV. And this is very important that what we are trying at least a little bit move forward, that what is possible in this public space and what is not. Thank you. Stodelat, thank you for being here. And come out and see the project. <laughs>